Hi everyone, my name is Tantacles, and this video is my attempt to beat Final Fantasy VI with only Terra. And while Terra isn't always in the party, you should know that I have a satisfying plan to address that issue that we'll talk about a little bit later. To see the full rules, check out the discreetly do. But in short, Terra is the only character who can take meaningful action. All other characters must be dead before that happens, with one exception that we'll talk about in a bit, and this is a natural magic run. That means that Terra may not equip any espers or use any magic that she doesn't learn on her own. Terra is one of two characters in the game who can learn magic without the use of espers, and without that ability, this run would be literally impossible. I remember really loving Terra in my first playthrough almost 20 years ago. This game is the story of her triumph over her abusers, and it only seems fitting that she be the one to take them down. The game starts in the city of Narsha. Our initially unnamed mystery woman is being manipulated through a mind control device, and along with big Biggs and Wedge, she invades the city to recover an Esper. After killing Biggs and Wedge with our Femme Fatale's magic, the first few battles are a breeze. She uses a Magitek armor, which provides offensive and healing spells for her to use, and one hit is enough to kill every single enemy in this prologue. But there's a problem, and the problem is the Megalodoths. These mammoth-like enemies cast Snowstorm, a powerful ice spell that hits all party members. And because the other party members are dead, its power is markedly increased, so I die. But I came up with a plan. If I could kill one of them before it attacks, perhaps I could survive one cast of Snowstorm, heal, and then destroy them. And I attempt this battle six more times, hoping that will happen. No juice, unfortunately. Both Megalodots consistently attack before Lady No Name does, completely obliterating her. There's also no way to grind at this point in the game, as every single encounter is scripted. So for the prologue, I allow Biggs and Wedge to stay alive and act as temporary meat shields. But I already killed off Wedge and Biggs earlier, and I I have no way to revive them at this point, so I have to reset the run. Literally five minutes in, how embarrassing. Things go pretty smoothly the second time around. Letting Biggs and Wedge stay alive, despite the fact that they do absolutely nothing, is enough to get me through this battle. And then we meet the first boss of the run, Ymir. This Thunder Snail retreats into his shell after a few turns, and attacking him results in a nasty Thunder counterattack. Fortunately, with her Magitek armor providing great offense and healing, our Cryptic Machinist blasts right through them with no issue. We then encounter a frozen Esper. Biggs and Wedge are destroyed, the Esper causes some kind of explosion, and we have to name the newly awakened protagonist. I name her Prius, because she's a hybrid. If you know, you know. After escaping, though, she goes a bit off-road. Have no fear, though, our favorite thief is here to rescue her. Did you know that the number one most stolen car in the United States is the Chevrolet full-sized pickup truck? Well, now you do, and fittingly, I name our thief friend Chevrolet PU. In any case, once he finds Prius, she's still incapacitated, so along with some Moogle we play a fun minigame. Enemy forces slowly approach, and we have to defeat their leader before the enemy forces reach Prius and capture her. With only Chevy PU's party, we quickly make our way to the leader. While he can't use multi-target attacks, his physical attacks are pretty strong. He knocks out all of my Moogle friends, and Chevy PU is left with just 52 HP, one hit away from death, but we just barely scrape by with a win in the end. We then escape Narsha and head to the desert. After we kill off Chevy PU and turn a few bunnies into burgers, we fight some very cute scorpions. What's not cute, though, is their numb attack, which causes the stop status. Stop lasts for a long time in this game, and it's completely incapacitating. This status is going to be the source of a lot of losses in the game. For example, right here, because Prius dies. Her battery clearly needs a replacement. And then I realized that I forgot to save. But fortunately, I'm playing on the remaster. Whenever you enter a new area, whether it's a new room in a dungeon, the overworld, or a new city, the game automatically saves your progress. Big improvement from the original. Moving on, though, I cruise control my way through the desert, and on my second try, I just avoid fighting the scorpions altogether. We meet King Edgar, who I name Edcar, and we also have to name his brother. Because he likes to smash things, I call him Punch Buggy. Then Kefka, one of the generals of the Empire, demands that King Edgar hand over Prius. And when he says no, Kefka sicks some gas-guzzling SUVs on us, and these guys are tough. Even before we're able to kill Edgar, one of them takes us out with a Magitek laser. And this battle would be so easy if I could just start with Edgar dead. But unfortunately, he joins the party before we can fight any random battles. On my second try, though, I managed to get him killed. But then, I fat finger Prius's fire spell and accidentally have her attack herself. And I die. This run is going very badly. On my third try, though, Aran Kizis is on our side. The Magitek armor kills Edgar first, and then Prius stalls until they attack with two physical attacks. She then uses her fire spell to overheat one Magitek armor's engine, and once one of them is dead, the second can't do enough consistent damage to threaten 
threaten her, and it goes down. We make our escape through the South Figaro cave, and we head to South Figaro. There we meet Shadow, whom I name Batmobile, because he's stealthy. And there we get the Hermes sandals. These shoes provide the auto haste status, which will make it much easier for Prius to heal off damage, particularly in multi-enemy fights. And speaking of multi-enemy fights, we next jettison our way through Mount Colts, where we fight Vargas and his two Chevy Cabarros. I defeat Cabarro number one with two fire spells, but Vargas' massive wind damage, along with the Cabarro's claw attack, takes me down to one HP. But fortunately, because of my Hermes shoes, I'm able to get in a couple of cure spells and take down Cabarro number two. And once Vargas is alone, his damage output is frankly underwhelming. Prius sideswipes him into oblivion. Oh wait, I forgot that there's a scripted bit after this. Punch Buggy joins the party and everyone else is forcibly ejected, so we have to use Punch Buggy to clean up the scrap, which he does with no problem. We then head on to the Returner's base, where it's revealed that South Figaro has been invaded, and we pile the party onto a raft. In this section, Bannon's death is a game over, so we keep him alive for the sake of not ending the run. Now, normally, this part of the game is a cakewalk, or a cake raft, if you will. Bannon is an obligate healer and has the prey ability, so he does a great job of keeping the party healthy. But since we don't have his assistance, he's the game's equivalent of RE4's Ashley Graham, just a defunct trailer we have to drag around with our ailing little four-horsepower engine. And unfortunately, two lesser low pros cast a powerful fireball attack, overheating his engine and totaling him. I'll admit, I was a little shocked by this. I've played through this game four or five times now, and I've literally never died in this battle sequence. I think the problem is that with four characters, the fireball spell's damage gets distributed amongst the party members, and if Prius were alone and didn't have to tow Bannon around, things might have gone differently. On my second try, though, I do make it through the fight with the lesser low pros. Once I'm through it, Bannon gets some extra levels and is able to survive future battles much more easily. And speaking of future battles, our next boss is Ultros. Ultros is a very strong opponent, particularly his tentacle attack. Fortunately, Bannon, while on defense and in the back row, is pretty good at surviving it, though we do get pretty low on health during this battle. However, Terra ultimately roasts this squid and turns him into calamari. Punch Buggy pursues him and gets Garlic Ranch blasted off into the Velt. Now, at this point, we have to complete three different story paths and we can complete them in whichever order we want. I elect to start with Prius's story first for the sake of continuity, and in all honesty, there's not much to talk about. I ride the raft, fight more monsters, hedge inertia, and bada bing bada bust. This section is done. Next, I head on to Punch Buggy's section, and Prius isn't available here, so we don't have any limitations in this section. I recruit Batmobile, and I head to Doma Castle, where we meet Cyan. I call him Rolls Royce, because he's a man of luxury. And we also have our first... And we also have our second encounter with Kefka, and I think we need to take a moment to talk about him. Kefka is without a doubt my favorite Final Fantasy villain. In most games, a villain like Kefka would be relegated to a sidekick role, fulfilling the real big bad's desires with little agency of his own. But Kefka is a different sort of beast. In order to win the skirmish with Doma, he poisons the river water, killing the entire population living in the castle, civilians and soldiers alike. And he's positively gleeful about it. His atrocity is both a calculated war move and a delight delightful treat for him. He's a uniquely irredeemable enemy, and his presence in the game adds strong motivation to put a stop to the Empire. Among the slain are Rolls-Royce's wife and son. This rightfully sends him into a rage, and we join him in defeating the Empire's forces and ultimately head to the Phantom Train, which brings souls to the afterlife. And while I'm normally a huge fan of public transit, I do feel the party would be much better off if they just drove a sedan. And we head on to the boss of the Phantom Train, which is the train itself. Punch Buggy's colossal strength takes down the train and seconds after he literally suplexes it, and we jump down Baron Falls to fight our next boss, the Rhizopath. And he also goes down with little difficulty. Our almost drowned bodies are discovered by Gao. He's a little bit slower than a regular car, if you will, so we call him Boat. What, was I supposed to say something else there? We head into town, buy some dried meat, and recruit Boat. There's a waterfall that will take us back to Narsha. And after we defeat a few easy underwater monsters, we finally head into Chevy PU's story, which is where things get interesting. Because after we steal everyone's clothing and deceive a small child, convincing that child to open up his family's secret passageway, we meet Celis. And Celis is special. She, like Prius, can learn magic naturally. They do have a few key differences, which I'll talk about a bit later. But because of her ability to use magic, she's the best substitute that we have for Prius when she's unavailable. So 
when she's not in the party, the obligation to drag the party through the game will fall on her. And given the inevitable competition that will form between them, I name her Tesla. And with Chevy PU in tow, Tesla begins the commute back to South Figaro Cave, where we have to deal with another huge obstacle, the tunnel armor. And as I mentioned, Prius and Tesla do have some differences. Prius currently only has one special ability, magic. She learns mostly fire spells and curative spells in the early game. Tesla, on the other hand, learns curative spells, but instead of fire, learns ice spells. But when equipped with a sword, she also has access to another ability, runic. This ability allows her to absorb the next spell cast, either by the enemy or the party. When she absorbs a spell, she gains MP equal to the cost of the spell, and the spell has no effect. And in a casual run of this game, the expectation for this boss is that Tesla will mainly use the runic ability. She'll absorb his powerful spells while Chevy PU focuses on dealing damage exclusively. However, with Chevy PU dead, Tesla is going to have a ton of trouble with this battle, so Tesla has a little bit of a breakdown. I tried this battle at increasing levels dying multiple times, and I ultimately realized that the only way to win this battle is to get a high enough level that I can survive at least two of its attacks. And the level at which that happens is level 16. Tesla has 443 max HP, and Tunnel Armor's attacks do around 200 damage. With these new levels, I just barely avoid a meltdown, and the Tunnel Armor finally goes down, which was a relief because getting through this boss took about an hour in total. And finally, now that we've beaten all three scenarios, the party reunites in Narsha, ready to fight off the Emperor's invasion. We now have to protect the same Esper we met in the beginning of the game from Kefka, and that involves splitting the party into three groups. But of course, the only group we'll be using is the group that has Prius. She fights off the 12 enemy hordes with ease, and that allows her to gain some very useful levels, because the next fight is with Kefka himself. Now, Prius is able to do some pretty good damage with her magic, and she's making good progress until Kefka casts Blazara. Despite all the levels I've gained, Blazara can deal more HP than Prius's entire HP bar. And after banging my head against the wall several times, I realize that this battle is literally impossible at my current level. And furthermore, since I saved right before the beginning of this battle, there's nowhere for me to grind, which means, unfortunately, that I have to backtrack. And I spend a few hours going through both Punch Buggy's quest and Tesla's quest. I have to redo Tesla's grind, which is exquisitely painful, and then I finally redo the raft section and end up near Narsha. There, I grind up to level 15, and we try again. After making all the grunts eat my dust, I'm at level 17, and it's time to fight Kefka. During the course of this battle, I get poisoned, confused, shocked, and of course, frozen by his Blazara spell. But ultimately, Prius revs her fiery engine in his face, and this disaster is finally over. But I guarantee this is not the final disaster of this run. Because we now have a little chat with the Esper on the hill, and Prius transforms from a Prius into a plane, flying away to places unknown. And this is why it was crucial to have a plan for her absence. She won't be rejoining the party for quite a while. So now Tesla takes the helm, we take the castle of Edcar underground, and we head to Zozo. And with a solo Tesla, Zozo is not a fun place. Very quickly after arriving, I get caught in a battle with a Veil Dancer. Like Kefka, these masked beauties have access to level 2 magic spells, and this one short circuits Tesla with a well-timed Thundara. So I do a bit of grinding to ensure I'll make it up to Prius's terrace, and we head into our next boss battle with Dataluma. His most dangerous move is throwing a dagger or a mithril knife, which does about half of Tesla's maximum HP. However, it's not enough to be really threatening, and I take him down in good time with Tesla's ice magic. We then head up to Prius and her scrapyard, and we meet the Esper Rama. And if you thought the run was hard before, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because at this point in the game, we get access to Espers. And each Esper gives access to three things. First, each Esper, when equipped, slowly teaches magic to the game's characters. Each one also enables a unique summon that can be used once per battle. And finally, they give stat boosts, greatly increasing characters' damage and defensive utility. And we're not going to be using any of that. Prius and Tesla both learn their own sets of magic, and that is all we will have access to. And that will make the next section, the Opera House, quite difficult. Because Tesla has to sing in the opera, she can't help with the next battle with Ultros, which of course is complicated by the fact that I forgot to put in the other party members, so I failed to make it through even the prerequisite battles. And to change party members, the game requires that I return to Narsha, as that's where all the party members are. And I honestly find this frustrating. I want to be able to change my party members in the overworld. They should have fixed this in the remaster. Why does everything have to be so hard? But eventually, I trek my way back, and I settle on a party of Chevy PU, Punch Buggy, and Rolls Royce. We head back to the Opera House to fight Ultros, and while the battle isn't easy, having three party members is certainly more reasonable than having just one. And these boys destroy this wet squid in very reasonable time. But now, Tesla is kidnapped by the airship-owning womanizer Setzer, whom I named DeLorean. You know, because in Back to the Future, there's a flying DeLorean. And after a rigged coin toss, we now have an airship, and we head to the Empire. After our new 
friend makes a distraction, we trek through the Empire's facility and fight Ifrit. Fortunately, he's weak against ice, so Tesla's Blizzard spell makes quick work of him, and we get more useless espers. Yay! I also die to one of these guys casting level 5 death. And for the rest of the run, just assume I'm going to die to some more random encounters. I am going to focus mostly on the boss fights, though, since most random encounters are skippable. And speaking of boss fights, our next fight is with number 024. This boss regularly changes his weaknesses and resistances, and unfortunately, we only have access to three elements, ice from Cells' magic and fire and lightning from the two elemental swords I picked up. So this battle takes quite a while. It actually reminds me quite a bit of the fight with Magus from Chrono Trigger. He has a similar mechanic, constantly changing his weakness. The difference is that there are only four elements to pick from in that battle and eight in this one. And Magus doesn't heal, and this guy does. But in any case, I eventually get the better of him and I take him down. Tesla quote unquote betrays the party, even though she very clearly saves them, and the leftovers crowd fights the arch nemesis of all cars, motorcycles. Neither Prius nor Tesla are in this battle, so I won't dwell on it too much, but suffice it to say, not leveling them has not been kind to their HP stat. We suffer several deaths along the way in this battle. And after this, we head back to Zozo and learn the true origins of Prius. She was born when a Honda Civic and a Chevy Volt combined their power sources. In other words, she's half Esper, half human. Her mother, Madeline, found her way into the Esper's homeworld and fell in love with her father, Maduin. And from their union, a Prius was born. However, when the Empire invaded the Esper realm, all three were expelled through the gate to the human realm. Emperor Gestalt tore the baby from her mother's arms and murders Madeline, vowing to use Prius to rule the earth. And conveniently, we now return to Prius' side and she rejoins the party. And next we head to the realm of the Espers, and in this section I'm able to grind quite effectively. Almost all the enemies in this area are undead, and Prius now has learned the Raise spell. This spell normally revives party members, which is totally useless in this run, but it also has the effect of immediately killing any undead monsters. We then head to the door to the Espers' realm, where they respond to Prius' call, setting the Empire ablaze. We eat a banquet, the Emperor expresses remorse for his actions, and we head to Tomasa to calm the escaped espers. And now that we're in Tomasa, let's talk about one of the rules of this run. In a casual run, I'd usually buy some elemental rods in Tomasa. They cast a level 2 version of elemental spells, which are very strong. But honestly, since you can buy an infinite number, that seems too easy for a challenge run. The whole point of a natural magic run is to see what the characters can do on their own without external help. However, if the game gives me a rod, I do feel it's appropriate to use it, because because I found it. But let me know in the comments what you would do. And we'll talk more about these rods a little bit later. In any case, in Tomasa, we meet Strago, whom I name Buggy, and Realm, whom I name Horse. And of course, horses are the least intelligent of all cars, so she gets trapped inside of a burning building. I grab a fire rod from inside, as that will be very helpful later, and the boss of the burning building is the Flame Eater. While Prius's fire magic isn't incredibly useful, she does now have a new ability, Trance. When she goes into Trance, she channels her latent Esper abilities. This allows her to increase her offensive capability and decrease the amount of magic damage that she takes by half. The duration, though, is dependent on the number of magic points that Prius gains in battle. The more she gets, the longer it lasts. And with this new ability and her icy sword, the flame eater goes down pretty quickly. And that leaves just one more piece of business on the agenda. We need to find the Espers. They're in a cave nearby, but unfortunately, so too is Ultros. And while the beginning of this boss battle isn't too hard, the second phase is meant to be completed in a special way. Horse returns to the party, and despite being a substandard vehicle, she is an amazing artist. She's meant to use her sketch ability to draw Ultros using his tentacle ability against him. That will end the battle immediately. But we are not doing that. Instead, we let Ultros kill her. And while Ultros does have some powerful magic, Prius's abilities are far superior. It's a close call, but in the end, Prius roasts this squid and sends him packing. And then we find the Espers. They feel some remorse for destroying the Empire's central city, and they agree to make peace with the Empire. And all is well. True peace has been achieved. Until Kefka returns. He incapacitates the party and slays each and every Esper, claiming their crystalline corpses as trophies. And when his compatriot General Leo objects and tries to stop him, he kills him too. And sensing chaos, the Espers from the Esper realm once again open the gate, providing Kefka with more Espers to slay and thus more power. And even worse, the Emperor and Kefka discover the Warring Triad, a trio of statues that are the source of all magical power. Their new find creates a continent that floats above the clouds, and the only way forward is to head there and confront them. But before we get there, we have to fight the Empire's Air Force. We burn through their robots and then fight Ultros and Mr. Typhon. But at the end of the battle, Typhon snorts us away into the actual boss battle of this section, the Air Force. He has three sections, the Missile Bay, the Laser Gun, and himself. Each has powerful single target spells, and they use them successively, overwhelming Prius's ability to cure herself and severely bruising her chassis. And it's very clear to me that it's grind time. But before that, I save Mog from a dog, and I name him Clown Car. Sure, I could have let him die because I'm not using other characters, but I think anyone who lets a Moogle fall 
fall off a cliff is a terrible person. In any case, we head back to the cave where the espers were to grind and reach level 42. We now have access to the Cura spell, which will make Prius far less reliant on her elixirs and X potions that we hope to save. By the way, that's a key difference between her and Tesla. Tesla only learns the Cura spell, making her healing much less robust, and that will become relevant in just a little bit. But in any case, this time we have enough damage output and HP to plow right through this ugly ass plane. Not a car, not my friend. So we head through the floating continent and fight the Ultima weapon. The big challenge of this battle is not the boss's overall damage output, but rather its tornado spell, which will immediately bring Prius into critical HP. However, because she has the Cura spell, she can easily recover to near full HP, bringing her out of danger. And Ultima weapon goes down. Interestingly, there's a blade by the same name that we got earlier, but there's no relation, though the blade will ultimately be quite useful. We now hit a turning point in the game. Tesla, who we thought betrayed us, double crosses Kefka, stabbing him. And Kefka, in return, kills the Emperor and shifts the Warring Triad's position, leaving us paralyzed and powerless. But Batmobile comes to the rescue, pushing the statues in a different direction and temporarily paralyzing Kefka. We flee the scene, and while I was adamant about saving Clown Car because of my fervent love of Moogles, I do not feel the same way about Batmobile. We jump to our airship without waiting for him, and he silently perishes. And now Kefka's interference with the statues reshapes the world of balance, creating new continents and forming the world of ruin. And when the game continues, we must play as Tesla. I have one goal in mind, find Prius so that we can have her finish the game. So we kill Uncle Sid with a fish, and we head to Mobliz. Prius has been acting as a mother to a bunch of orphan children, but it's time to wake up and kill stuff. Of course, the battle against the approaching boss monster Humbaba is scripted and Prius automatically loses. In the subsequent real battle, though, we use Tesla. Unfortunately, though, Humbaba has some pretty powerful attacks, most notably his Thandara spell and the Thousand Needles magic. That automatically does a thousand damage and pokes a million holes in Tesla's power supply, stalling her out. And there's only one thing for it, I suppose. It's time to grind some more. So I take Tesla to level 28 and I try again. And with just a little bit more health and attack power, she gets a jump start and takes out Humbaba. But Prius isn't ready to rejoin the party quite yet. So after a chocobo ride, a meeting with a mysterious man who looks an awful lot like Edcar, and a cruise back through Figaro Castle, we fight some tentacles. No relation to Tantocles. Now these guys aren't the easiest for Tesla, as her poor healing makes this fight far more difficult than it would have been with Prius, but with Tesla's new Blazara spell, she's able to make quick work of them. Next, we seek out Rolls Royce. He's the only one who can get us access to another airship. We head to the grave of his dead girlfriend, it's complicated, to procure it. On the way through, I solve a puzzle to get a growth egg, which will make grinding much easier by doubling experience, which is important considering what's about to happen in the next battle with Dullahan. Now, Dullahan is an interesting boss. At the beginning of the battle, he casts Blazara, Blazaga, and Holy. And those spells are enough to take Tesla out without even getting to the interesting part. So I do some grinding and I try this boss a few more times with no success. Remember when I talked about grabbing the fire rod in Tamasa? Well, I start the battle with that rod and I heal incredibly conservatively, using physical attacks to continue damaging him. Unfortunately, though, after being hit by eight attacks, Dullahan's attack pattern changes. He gets access to even more powerful ice magic and more importantly, the Northern Cross spell. That spell freezes Tesla and makes her unable to move. It's effectively a more powerful version of the stop spell, except it can only be removed by using a fire spell on the affected character. And since Tesla is our only character, she goes down. But on my next try, I have a new strategy. Instead of using my fire rod right away, I start by casting haste on myself and using the flame tongue sword since Dullahan is weak against fire. Then, once Dullahan uses ultimate zero, signaling that the second half of the battle has started, that's when I use my flame rod in addition to a holy rod I obtained. This massive bolus of damage is enough to defeat Dullahan and get me my airship. And that means it's now time for Prius to reclaim her rightful place on the throne. But first, I've got to defeat Humbaba. And given all the leveling we've been doing and the fact that we beat him once before, this battle with him is no problem. His thunder spells, his thousand needles attack, his ugly face that looks like he fell in a shovel, none of them can stop Tesla. She effortlessly takes him out and we finally have Prius, queen of the hybrids, back in the party. And while we could go immediately to Kefka's tower to start the final challenge, we have a couple other things to take care of and a couple optional bosses to fight. First, we rescue Horse from a couple of behemoth kings and then we fight Tritok. We recruit Clown Car and Umaro, whom I name Bus. We fight our way through the Phoenix Cave to lure Chevy PU back into the party and God, why does everyone have a dead girlfriend in this game? And we recruit Gogo, whom I name Prius? And that's all well and good, but there are two more things I do that are crucial to this run. First, I head to the Magic Tower to grab the safety bed. This relic prevents the death status, which is not protected against by Ribbon. That will come in very handy very soon. And I also take Chevy PU back to Narsha and get the Ragnarok sword. This is a great sword that does a ton of damage and also casts flare. But I then bet this sword at the arena to get the Lightbringer, the most powerful sword in the game. This 
Fire Sword gives you a ton of bonus stats, drains a little bit of magic points for an automatic critical hit, and can cast a holy spell on attack. And I think you'll see that this will be very useful. And now it's time to head into Kefka's Tower. And if you've made it this far in the video, do me a big favor and crash your car into the like button and the subscribe button. Also, many of my viewers tell me that YouTube is terrible at notifying them both about vehicle component recalls and my videos. So if you want to be updated whenever I post a new video or go live, honk your horn three times and join my Discord server. There's a link to that in the discreetly do. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Now, if you've played this game before, you might be thinking, wait, Tantacles, you have to use three parties to get through Kefka's tower. And that's true. Bosses you defeat don't respawn, meaning we can do this dungeon with Prius in multiple party positions and have her fight every single one. So let's go boss by boss. And we'll start with this abomination right here. Inferno. This guy has three components, his main body and his arms. I have the force shield equipped, which prevents almost all magic attacks from hitting me. Now, interestingly, in the original release, the evade stat was bugged and didn't help you evade physical attacks. Instead, the magic evade stat was used for all evasion in the game. Therefore, the force shield was one of the best shields in the game. But in this version, that has been patched and physical attacks are hugely dangerous. But in any case, Inferno's physical attacks, along with its undodgeable meteor spell, are what take me out the first time I fight it, which, as you might guess, means it's time to grind, up to level 51 to be exact. So I take out Inferno's arm first and I'm doing good damage, but then he kills me with a meteor. But I try one more time, and I have a strategy. I notice that Inferno uses a barrier attack that halves his physical damage once I kill both of its arms. So this time, I leave them both alive, and I'm doing pretty good damage, I get a couple lucky holy activations, and within about a minute he goes down. And that victory makes my motor purr. And we have to move on to the next boss. And that boss is the first statue of the Warring Triad, the Goddess Statue. Now, this boss has some interesting qualities. First, it absorbs Holy, meaning that if the Lightbringer's special effect goes off, I end up healing her. And second, she casts Overture, a spell that causes the character affected to protect her from all physical attacks. This means that ultimately, the best strategy to take her out is magical attacks. Prius's Fyra and Fyraga attacks are perfectly adequate for this purpose. There is one problem, though, and that is her Cloudy Heaven spell. This spell inflicts a countdown timer that will inflict Zombie when it hits zero and the zombie status in this game is the equivalent of death. And unfortunately, because I didn't restore my MP before this fight, Prius enters the spiritual scrapyard destined to haunt newer models for all eternity. On my second try, however, I use Prius's trance ability to deal damage more quickly, and Goddess goes down before she can even cast Cloudy Heaven to begin with. And our next boss is Guardian. Now, Guardian has a standard attack mode, but after being attacked, he copies the attacks of our old foes. And the first one of those foes is Ultros. Ultros's tentacle attack does more than Terra's maximum health, and it puts her back in the shop, meaning it's time to grind some more. Editing Tantacles here to say that I actually did not grind. I think I got overexcited about my own suffering and forgot. And I try this battle 10 more times, and on attempt number 10, I use Trance, his tentacle attack doesn't kill me, and I manage to take him out with Prius's massive physical damage. And the next statue is Demon. And this battle is... wow. So earlier in the tower, I acquired the Minerva Bustier. This armor gives a ton of stats, increasing maximum MP, and most importantly negates fire, ice, lightning, and wind damage. And the most powerful attack of the demon statue is Flare Star. And this battle really doesn't have any special mechanics, it just does a ton of damage. And Prius takes zero from that damage, so within minutes, he's gone too. Just one more statue to go, the Fiend statue. I truly saved the hardest for last. Once his HP goes to half, he casts a bunch of statuses on himself, including Reflect, Haste, and the Terrible Image spell, which makes it near impossible to hit him with physical attacks. Even worse, his damage becomes absolutely insane, and he takes me out very quickly with his targeting and fiendish rage combo. And I try a few more times to brute force my way through this fight before I realize that Terra natively learns Dispel, which can clear every single one of his buffs. I'm not sure why it took me a bajillion tries on this battle to realize it, but hey, better late than never. So here's the strategy. I morph and get him down to lower than half HP, and after he casts his buffs, I dispel them. And on my first try on this boss, I get lucky. I hit him with a Lightbringer after he goes down to half health, and its Holy Cast activates, defeating him in one attack. 
And now we only have one more obstacle, Kefka himself. Kefka has multiple phases. In the first three phases, you fight a bunch of statues. We'll call these the S phases. S1, no big deal. S2, also pretty easy. But S3, here's where things get dicey. Because these two statues can cast Doom, making the safety bit crucial to my success. But did I remember to equip it? Absolutely not. But I guess that's a good thing, because you don't come here to see me succeed. You come here to watch me suffer. But second try, I put on the safety bit, phase one and two, no big deal. Phase three, the bit is equipped, so Doom is useless, and pretty quickly we head into the final phase against the big kahuna himself, Kefkar. He always starts the battle with Heartless Angel, which reduces HP to one, easily healable. But after that on this attempt, he immediately uses a Havoc Wing attack, which does almost 1,300 more than Prius's max HP, which means this time, it's really time to grind. And there's only one place to do that, the dinosaur forest, this little patch of forest that looks kind of like a dinosaur head. And after a ton of of untimely death and destroying the dinosaur race like a meteor, we hit level 70 and head back to Kefka. But don't worry, the dinosaurs get their revenge on Tesla as she innocently walks through the landscape. But it's time to try Kefka again, and this time I forget to equip the ribbon and I die in phase one. But let's go again. Here's my setup. I have the Genji glove equipped, which allows me to equip two weapons at once, and the two weapons I equip are number one, the Lightbringer, which you've already heard a lot about, and number two, the Ultima weapon, which deals damage based on Prius's max HP. The Mystery Veil provides some nice magic evasion and the Minerva Bustier is a must. And finally, I have the Ribbon equipped. Going in without the safety bit is risky. However, I think if I can damage Kefka quickly enough, I can kill him before my Doom Timer counts down and before my life is ended. So I start and phase one and two go just fine as expected. In phase three though, I do get afflicted with Doom, which is bad news. However, I'm able to destroy this phase before the timer counts down. I also make sure to morph before I finish it off. And on the start of the battle with Kefka, the Doom Timer resets meaning I have just 40 seconds to kill him. Of course, he starts with the Heartless Angel attack and I use an elixir. He attacks next, I hit him with my own attack in return, dealing 15,000 damage. His next attack is Blazaga, which I'm immune to. Then I hit him for another 15,000 damage. And then he preps his ultimate attack, Forsaken. I hit him again, for 15,000 again. There's no time to waste now as the Doom Timer is still counting down. He casts Forsaken and I survive it quite cleanly with 3,000 HP left. I hit him again for 10,000 damage and my Ultima weapon misses. Is. Shit. He casts Meteor, which does about a thousand damage, and I attack for 12,000 more damage, and all of a sudden, it's over. I have beaten Final Fantasy VI with only Terra, and Celis when she wasn't available, I guess. Thanks for watching, subscribe to the channel, see you in the next one, and bye bye!